Last year, I made a little film called Into the Warp. It was a KSP movie, and in this movie, I showcased this air launch craft here. And a lot of people were talking about this in the comments, saying they really liked this vehicle in particular. And I thought for this week, I'd dig up the craft file for this satellite launcher and showcase it uh, in a slightly more... Uh, I guess, dedicated way than just a small fraction of a much longer video. So here it is here. Here's the craft file. Um, this is it in its uh, movie configuration. In the film, it launched two satellites to encounter a most mysterious object in Juno orbit. Uh, didn't think it'd be that interesting to just recreate that exact mission because you could just watch the film if you want to. There should be a card on the screen if I did this right. Uh, so you can watch that if you want to see the mission this plane was actually built for. But I thought, let's try and make this a little bit more interesting. Let's launch a crewed vehicle um, that'll also go to Duna orbit, but won't do the thing that the thing did in the film thing. Great sentence there. Uh, didn't script this video as per usual. And once again, my impeccable commentary style uh, comes forth. Now, when it came to building the payload for this uh, launcher, I decided to keep things uh, the same proportions in terms of the fairing size. So I didn't delete the fairing itself, I just deleted all the guts of the fairing and then built the lander uh, vessel there inside the fairing, kind of awkwardly, but that's just to make sure that the fairing is identical to the fairing in the rocket used in Into the Warp. And that's kind of more realistic, right? Like things like uh, the Electron rocket by Rocket Lab, in fact, most rockets in real life, uh, they don't change the fairing size for every single mission. Of course, there are some exceptions for very uh, specific payloads, but for the most part, uh, the fairings don't change. I thought, let's try and keep this somewhat in the uh, the realm of reality and keep the fairing for this launcher the same size as its configuration in Into the Warp, just so this could actually, you know, just to kind of prove that this could actually work as a real launch vehicle. Now, we've got the gorgeous waterfall mod providing the engine plume for the whiplash engines and indeed all of the engines used throughout this video. However, do you hear that? Exactly. It's very quiet. For some reason, none of the audio captured, which was very frustrating because I always play KSP with all the sound turned off on my computer. It's obviously KSP, the sounds are still active, but like I can't listen to music or watch a video on the second monitor or whatever because I want to capture the audio from the gameplay. And that didn't happen for some reason. So not quite sure why there's no music. So what I'll do, music, there's no sound effects. So what I'll do is I'll probably put in the background some of the music from Into the Warp because I think Into the Warp had a great soundtrack, if I do say so myself, because I picked it. Of course, it's up to my taste. But I, I, think I enjoy the Into the Warp soundtrack. So hopefully the background of this video, while it's not as you know accurate as I'd like it to be in terms of having the sound effects of the engines, I hope it at least still is a serviceable alternative. Now for the first part of this flight, I'm just basically pointing prograde and just flying up to a nice high altitude, basically to the point where the whiplash engines flame out. Now, as you can see, time that well, this plane really, really wants to nose up. It's not particularly stable, so I basically just had to have it hold the prograde vector on auto SAS in order to have it controllable. And then once I reached the 20 kilometer mark, I then fired up the vector engine and we can deploy the I guess the rocket here. Now, uh, and some of you may have already cottoned on to this error, the actual rocket used in Into the Warp did not have a vector engine. It had the Bobcat engine. I think it's called the Bobcat engine that came with the Making History DLC. It's supposed to be the in-game analog for the Titan uh, engine that was used on the, um, the Gemini missions in real life. Uh, but I didn't realize until it came to editing this video and I put in some footage from the film at the beginning. I was like, huh, that's a that's a different engine. So, oops, that that was my bad, guys. But this would actually work with the Bobcat. In fact, it would probably work a bit better because the Bobcat is slightly more efficient than the Vector engine at the expense of it doesn't have the same gimbal range. But really, we didn't need the insane gimbal range of the Vector, so it was all fine. Now, what wasn't fine was my planning. I got so excited to show you guys this um, this vehicle that I forgot to launch at a Juna transfer window, which... Say it with me, if you were to draw a line from Juna to the Sun to Kerbin. Oh, yes, I'm mixing it up for today, guys. If you draw a line from Juna to the Sun to Kerbin, the angle that that line should form should be about 45 degrees. And I did I did not do that. I didn't do that. So I had to, uh, uh, Valentina has now spent 178 days in low Kerbin orbit while we wait for a suitable Juna transfer window. But that's all done. You know, she's just a... Uh, 
she's pretty resilient. She, well, I've put Netflix. I've put Netflix in the uh, in the in the cockpit. It's only it's it's North Korean Netflix. Okay, so there's not many shows. There's just uh, uh, there's only like two seasons of Our Glorious Leader's Gloriousness, and that's the only show. And it's not a very good show. It's got an IMDb score of like three. So um, don't really know how I ended up on this tangent now I think about it. But here we are getting our Juna encounter. Gee, I, I could have talked about a great number of things, couldn't I, that would have actually been relevant to the footage on screen. But I guess I'm just above all of that, I suppose. Uh, I guess there's not much to discuss with the craft itself that isn't just obvious on screen. We had the vector lower stage that was not movie accurate, but I guess, you know, we've got to take what we can here at Laun Pictures. <laughs> uh, and then the upper stage is just like a terrier engine that serves as the transfer stage that gets us to Juno orbit. Normally in the film, uh, we would have circularized around Juno orbit in between Juno and Ike, and then the satellites would have uh, encountered a very mysterious alien spacecraft, entered it, explored it, that sort of thing. I'll try and keep things vague in case you've not seen Into the Warp. It is genuinely... I think one of my best videos I've ever made. Uh, so do check that out if you want to. That's just um, I, I would I, I think you'd enjoy it if you enjoy KSP. So there you go. That's my that's my recommendation of my own video right there. Now before we get our Ike encounter, I'm first of all going to uh, perform a burn at Juna Periapsis, just because that's a bit more efficient than just burning directly at Ike Periapsis. Even though we do have an Ike encounter right now, it's better to just perform our uh, Juna Periapsis retrograde burn and then we'll just sort out our Ike encounter once we've done that. Now I did set my uh, altitude to be 40 kilometers which is within Juna's atmosphere but I just I, f I guess I just forgot how thin Juna's atmosphere was and I realized that we've basically it's basically providing no aerodynamic resistance whatsoever so we're gonna have to do our circularization basically entirely with our Terrier engine which is fine we've got more than enough Delta V um, so I guess that was uh, this is probably more realistic Let's Let's be honest. Aero braking is for noobs. I'm spinning this that way, and this is what I intended to do. And anyway, even if you don't believe this very believable story, we have enough delta V regardless. We have more than enough delta V, so it's not really an issue either way. Now, here we are. Uh, my Ike encounter isn't great. It's a polar orbit, which is a little bit more awkward because I always like to land on the sunny side of a planet or moon because then it's just a bit easier for you guys to see. It's more brightly lit and you can see the terrain a bit more easily and it's harder to get a daytime landing when you're you know, going along the poles because you're kind of straddling the day and night side of a planet or moon, but uh, it doesn't really... It didn't matter because I managed to land on the sunny side. So... I don't know, this is why I don't, see, guys, this is why I don't really talk about the, the footage on screen very much, because as soon as I try and talk about what's specifically on screen, this is what you get. It's just me saying a thing, and then trying to elaborate and drag out the thing for like 15 minutes. So, you guys, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about, what should I talk about? What's been going on in my life this week? Um, I edited a sick mountain bike video, that's gonna be going off my second channel. Very soon, yes. Yeah, subscribe, get that promotion in. Guys, if you're not subscribed to this channel, by the way, then uh, you know you should do that and check out my social media. Did I put it on screen? Maybe I forgot, like I did the last time I said this. But the social media is green. I post things. I posted something to my Instagram this week. That was very exciting. Uh, what else has been going on in the world of Matt Blown? Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. In my, in my, uh, in my, one of my more recent Kerbal Space Program videos, I think it was the most recent one but one. Like, my most recent one was the ESA space plane, I think. And then the one before that was the Hanging Mun Arch Base. And in this video, I mentioned that me and my girlfriend Beth were going to try some sake, some Japanese alcohol, which, um, I've never had before. It's one of those, um, you know, beverages that's very, very specific to uh, a, a specific country, I suppose. Uh, and, you know, I, I've never really, I've never seen sake really in bars or anywhere outside of Japanese themed restaurants. But as I mentioned in this brilliant video, you should check it out, by the way. <laughs> uh, we've, me, I've been playing a lot of Yakuza. And in this game, you know, it being set in Japan, there's lots of mention of sake. And I'm like, you know what? I've always been curious as to what sake tastes like. So I bought like a proper sake set like with stone glasses and like a uh, like a, a jug that you pour it into and then you put a candle under the jug and some water and it keeps the jug nice and warm. And we had a little sake night. And you know what, guys? I really like sake. It was very nice. So um, th that was it, actually. People said, can you, do a, can you do sake reviews just like you did whiskey reviews? 
And, you know, I'm happy to do that, guys. Let's do it. Let's do, let's do a sake review. Let's do a sake review. And I said that twice because I'm just dragging this point out because I don't know what sake we had. And I'm just frantically scrolling my a second monitor on my Amazon account trying to find the sake that I bought. And it's fine. I found it. So we can just pretend that none of this happened. Oh, by the way, um, there were some antics on the surface. I don't know if you saw. The lander was going to try and get them falling over, so I had to quickly land it somewhere else. It's all in the past. We've got, we got, a, I've got to be careful how I say this because it might get me demonetized. It's called Four Fox Sake. You can see how, like, if you saw that written out, how that might, I think that might be a joke or something like that, like, um, like shit amplifiers. Can I even say that? Should I blink myself out? You know what I mean, right? Those amplifiers. Um, it, either way, it is very nice. It was thirty-seven pounds ninety-five pence, and uh, it, it was nice. It's branded as ultra premium sake, and I must admit, I believe them. Had a nice, had a sweet taste like sake does, but it didn't sting and it didn't linger. It was just you had it, and it just it just tasted nice. And that's my sake review. On my sake review scoreboard, I put it at number one because it's the only one I've reviewed. Uh, I have had sake once before at a Japanese restaurant. I don't know what it was called. So we're calling it, this is the this is the sake. So, I mean, it's the baseline. So I guess, should I give it like a five? And then all sake is like rated against this, this sake? That doesn't seem very fair because uh, I feel like it was quite expensive. So it's probably a bit better than most of the cheaper sakes. I don't know. It was good. Just go with that. This, I don't know if you guys know this, but the whiskey scores I do are complete. This is a complete joke. So don't don't worry about the score too much. Uh, here I am trying to get waiting for a uh, Juno to Kerbin transfer window. By the way, um, I tried to use the new transfer window planner edition that came with KSP 1.2, but it didn't work because first of all my orbit was too inclined, and then when I fixed that, it said my orbit was too eccentric. So, couldn't, so it's a completely pointless. I can't think of many applications where it's actually useful unless you're going directly from low curve in orbit to somewhere else, or I guess from uh, low insert celestial body orbit here to somewhere else. But it's got to be perfectly equatorial, pretty much. Like I feel like my limited experience with it is that it's very, very restrictive. You basically have to be completely equatorial for it to work. So I'm not quite sure how. I don't think it's very good. I think it could be better, but whatever. It's better than nothing, and I've not. I've, you know, it's only just been added. I've done fine thus far, not using it. So I'll just be fine continuing to not use it. But I feel like it's just wasted potential. I guess is what I'm getting at here. Uh, there, there, there's my Kerbin encounter. By the way, uh, I didn't get it completely dead on. You'll probably notice me flipping. Uh, between prograde and retrograde a couple of times. I was trying to get a periapsis of about, uh, you know, between 30 and 40 kilometers. And uh, I kept on undershooting and overshooting. And <laughs> there's the overshot. Now I'm going to try and get it again. Whoop. Here we go. And now I've overshot again. So we're going to go back to prograde. And this is, you guys can now see what's happening here. I, I think I would have, there you go, 37. We'll take 37. That's fine. Uh, well, I think I'll look. My plan was up. Uh, my plan was 30 kilometers, and I thought between 30 and 40 is fine. Then we'll do a minimal correction burn as we enter Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now we do have 159 meters per second of delta V, so I had a lot of like spare fuel to do fine tuning. But I wanted to get it fairly dead on from Juna's orbit because I guess that's just more satisfying to like get such a precise uh, burn and orbit planned from such a long distance away. I don't know, maybe it's just me trying to make games for myself in this. I've obviously played a lot of Kerbal Space Program, so I've got to make entertainment for myself in one which way or another. But yeah, we are rapidly uh, approaching Kerbin just here. So uh, it doesn't look beautiful. That's, I think that's a astronomer's visual pack. What I'm waiting for, guys, now that Kerbal Space Program has received its final ever, in theory, update. Oh, there's a Great fireworks show that you can't hear because NVIDIA Shadow Play didn't capture the audio. Uh, calm, calm thoughts. Uh, yeah, one thing I'm kind of excited for is that now that KSB has had its final update, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for all of the best visual mods to update and then just install all of them, then that's it. That's it, it will never change. So I can finally start putting a mod list in the description. Not that it will change anything because I used to put a mod list in the description and people still asked what mods I use every single video. So. I don't know if I bother, but I feel like there's at least got to be a couple of people that read the description and check the mod list, so maybe I'll, I'll do that. But I'm waiting for a couple of more mods to fi finish updating 
by the way, the video is done. We earned over a thousand and one hundred units of science. That was a, a great achievement. There are the patrons scrolling on screen and there are more video suggestions as well. You can join my channel by clicking the join button below the video. And wow, I thought I had to talk really fast because I thought the end screen was about to end, but it wasn't. Okay, now it